Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I bring you today's word for April 6, 2016. This message is part of a series entitled Refine Focus, where we are learning this year, 2016, how to live our lives with a greater level of focus so that we can become the men and women God has called us to be. We've been focusing in on the Word of God. We studied Joshua 1 and 8 for a while, and now we've been studying Psalms 1, verses 1, 2, and 3 for a while. And over a month now, we've been looking at this Psalms 1. We're going to go back to it today. The title of today's message is Success is a byproduct of your relationship with God. We finally got to the last line in Psalms 1 uh, of the passage that we've been covering, the Psalms 1 and 3, where everything you do is successful. And so I want to, to be very clear that, yes, while you strive for success, your, your success is really going to come as a byproduct of your relationship with the Father. So you don't pursue success, you pursue God, and success will pursue you. So let's get into it. So Psalms 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, King James, it says, it says Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, which bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also do not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In the easy-to-read version, it says, Great blessings belong to those who don't live, uh, who don't listen to evil advice, who don't live, live like sinners, and who don't make fun of God. Inst instead... They love the Lord's teachings, and they think about the Lord's teachings day and night. So they grow strong, like a tree that's planted by a stream. It, this tree has leaves that never fall, and everything they do is successful. So obviously, most people, most of us, you know, human nature, you read that song, you want to get to the point where everything you do is successful. That's the line we've been focusing in on for the last few days, mm -hmm. where everything you do literally is successful. Um, but my, the thought that I'm sharing with you today is that, yes, for you to have that, for you to get to the point where everything you do is successful, you have to understand that that success is going to come as a byproduct of your relationship with the Father. It's going to come birthed out of your relationship with the Father. And that's the thought that I want to deal with today. I'm not going to cover this whole thought today. Um, so we'll probably deal with it tomorrow, maybe even the next day. <clears throat> but let's focus in on that. Your success. You want to be successful? is going to come as a result of your relationship with the Father. So what does this mean to you today? I have four things to share with you. Uh, let's get into them. Number one, you and I, if you're born again and you're watching this video, we are New Testament believers. We are New Covenant believers. We're under a new covenant, this covenant of grace. And understanding the new covenant is critical to having a true relationship with your heavenly father. He's not some distant or despondent God. He is your loving, caring, sharing heavenly father who sent his son to die in your place, who sent his spirit to live inside of you as your eternal connection to him. Number two, the old covenant of the law put the focus on man. It was all about man working for God. Let's understand that real quick. So the covenant of the law put the emphasis on man and what man could do for God. It was all about man working for God and man attempting to do everything right. It was about do's and don'ts, about rules, and it was about man attempting to do everything right. This covenant was not designed to make you right because rules can't make you right. Rules can only show you how wrong you are. So this covenant was designed to prove to you, to man, to humanity, that we are wrong, that we could never be right, and that we needed a savior. See, man cannot get saved until he acknowledges the fact that he is lost. Before the law was given, so without the law, man could never sin because man didn't have any rules. So if you don't have any rules, so like Adam only had one rule in the garden, he broke that. And so, uh, but beyond Adam, they didn't have rules. So if you don't have rules, you can't be wrong because you don't have any rules to break. So the law was given um, to prove to man that man was wrong, to give you rules and once the rules were given, then man was quick to break them. So by focusing in on man and what man could do for God under the law, man was quick to see that we as humanity are inadequate. We are flawed. We are, we are infinitely flawed and we could never keep the law. The law was perfect. The Ten Commandments are perfect. And we could never, no human other than Jesus could ever fulfill that law, could ever fulfill that mandate, could ever keep the Ten Commandments. So the law, uh, because of that, because it proved that man was flawed, made provisions for sacrifices. 
So man knew that he could never fulfill the law. So what he did was in the, every year he had to get these animals and he would sacrifice animals. He would offer up animals as a sacrifice for his sin, for his flaws. Um, and and this, this had to repeat. The blood of innocent animals was shed for the actions of guilty man on a regular basis until Jesus came, which leads me to number three. The new covenant of grace puts us in a different category. Now the emphasis is not on man, but rather on God. The, the spotlight of the new covenant is not on man and man working for God, is on God and God working for man. It's a whole different covenant. So while the old covenant of the law had the spotlight on us, the new covenant of grace has the spotlight on, on the Father, and he is perfect in all of his ways. So the law was about man attempting to work for God, and under grace, we get to receive what God has already done for us. So it's not what I can do for God, it's what God has already done for me. And so now what my, my role is to believe and to receive what he has already provided, what he already made plans for me to receive. Grace is not about highlighting the fact that you're flawed and that you could never keep the law. I got that. The father's past that. He knew that. That's why he sent his son to die for you. So under grace, he knows that you're flawed. He knows that you have, you will have failures in and of yourself. He knows. That's why he says, don't, I, I don't even want you to work with your human ability, human strength. I want you to receive what I've given you. So under grace, we get to acknowledge the fact that we are flawed. We get to acknowledge the fact that we're not perfect, and we get to embrace the grace that Jesus died to give us. So now our life is not about us and what we can do for God. It's about God and what he's already done for us. So under grace, you know you're not perfect, but you get to live your life from a position of righteousness. Watch this. So you're not perfect, but you get to live your life from a position of having a right standing with God, a right position with God. Why? Because Jesus was perfect and his perfection was imputed to you. God took your sin, put it on Jesus. God took his righteousness, Jesus's righteousness, and put it on you. So now you get to live your life and address God from a position of perfection, from a position of righteousness, from a right standing with God, not because you're perfect, but because Jesus was perfect and because that perfect, that, that perfection, that, that righteousness was imputed to you. That is something you really got to understand for you to have a, a successful relationship with the Father as a new covenant believer. So number four and five, when you understand the covenant of grace that Jesus died to, to give you access to, you have a much better understanding of your role in your success in the earth. Your success in the earth does not come as a product of your human effort, your human toil, the sweat of your brow. No, godly success is birthed out of your relationship with the Father. When you have a relationship with your heavenly Father, through his son, by his spirit, then you abstain from the things that in Psalms 1 it says not to do. And you meditate on the word of God day and night and you experience success and everything you do is successful. But that success is coming by the grace of God. That success is coming because of God, not because of you. And you acknowledge that. That's the type of life and acknowledgement and relationship that the father wants to have with you. He wants to, you to walk with him and him to walk with you and for you to be successful, but knowing that your success is coming from him. It is grace-based success. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith. I want you to open up your mouth and say this over your own life from a believing heart. Open up your mouth and say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. I bring my life into focus in 2016 by maturing my relationship with you. Jesus did not die so I could have religion. Jesus actually died so I could be delivered from religion. In the Old Testament, they had religion. They had ritual. They had routine. In the new covenant, Jesus died to give me. I get to have a relationship with you. I commune with you daily, Father, through your son and by your spirit. Now, as I do, as I say what you tell me to say, as I do what you tell me to do, I experience divine success in this world. But my success does not come because of what I've done. My success comes because of what you have already done and you did it for me. So my success comes by grace. It comes for your glory and it comes as a result of my relationship with you. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. 
Look on the right-hand side of the website and sign up. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, focus on your relationship with the Father. Say whatever he tells you to say. Do whatever he tells you to do. And watch this. If you do that, everything you do will be successful. God bless you.